Now, uh, to look at the effect of the goings-on in the ANC and how it's been impacting on the party's public image, we're now joined by Marie Harris, who's a director and political uh, analyst at Ipsos. Uh, Mark Hinnell, thank you very much for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Good evening, Peter. All right, so um, I am quite intrigued and I've been asking analysts and they've kind of shied away from this because uh, partly it's hard to measure unless you know what you're doing and also sometimes we conflate the one million card-carrying members of the ANC and extrapolate that and, and say that that's the national mood. But yes. it's only a million people and there's 52 million people in the country. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you directly, uh, what's the national mood around President Jacob Zoom? The national mood around the president has been very, very negative for a long time. We see that when he became president in 2009, there was a little blip of optimism. Usually that happens. After an election, people feel far more optimistic. They, in, on the other hand, they also feel that they, in a way, need to uh, defend what they voted for and they mm. are then more optimistic. But it started going down very, very quickly. And in the 2014 elections, there was hardly a flutter after the election. So we see for all the indicators that it, we can talk about the decline of the Zuma years, the demise of the Zuma years. I don't know exactly which word to use, but mm -hmm. if you look at all the, the graphs that we have measuring public opinion every six months, they all go like down. So you're saying that from the beginning of his presidency, there's been a decline in public popular popularity from November 2009 yes my goodness so a lot of people say he's got huge support is that true then um, he does have support I mean we, we can't negate that he has more support in the ANC than what he has outside of the ANC which is also true for any political leader inside the ANC but if we look at the political leaders in the country, and we ask that every six months, if you have to judge this person as a political leader, give him points out of ten, of the people we measured um, over the last number of years, he scores the lowest, which is uh, just over 2.9 wow. out of ten. Uh, whereas all the others score a lot, lot higher than, than he does. And there are lots of different people, all the top six of the ANC on the list, uh, other political They're leaders on the list. They're all scoring more than the president? Yeah. Do they tell you why that he, they don't think they like him? Not in this particular study that we mm. do every six months, but we do a lot of other political studies. We're actually in field all the time mm. with political studies, but they don't always get published. And uh, a lot of studies we do for either parties or individuals, and they don't get, or for big corporations, and they don't get published either. Mm. So on this particular study that we do every six months, it's simply too full. You can't ask the whys yeah. and the wherefores. Yeah. But you look at other things, and we ask, obviously, other questions as well. And the big reason why the decline in support for President Zuma was so evident and so um, pronounced as it was, was the whole thing that people said he worries more about himself than mm -hmm. about the country. Mm -hmm. His friendship with the Guptas was very, very negatively per perceived by South Africans. Um, the deployment of cadres in the uh, SOEs, the state-owned enterprises, um, and um, I think his general disregard for the realities. Mm -hmm. um, I know Leanne uh, mentioned earlier about the uh, firing of Provin Gordon, uh, things like that. So those were the reasons that people. All right, but people will say, him. but hang on, he was Mr. I fixed HIV and AIDS in South Africa, I brought ARVs. Can't we give him credit for that? He did. And he should get credit for that. But if we also look at the feelings of people about HIV and the fighting against HIV, even that indicates the wind down over the last number of years. So I think there's like a halo effect. If uh, people have lost trust in somebody and he has no more credibility, then even the good things they do um, mm. get seen with a very sort of um, checkered view. Have you been able to track... Cyril Ramaphosa and his popularity, because he sort of came into the stage not so mm. long ago, 
Have you been able to track his popularity? We actually did. We did ask uh, a long time ago. Mm. Obviously, in the Mandela years, we asked about a, a few people. At that stage, he was more unknown. Currently, if I can just quickly yeah. look, and my, and my currently he gets a point of 6.07 from the general public in South oh. Africa, and from the ANC, 7.22. He's by far the the most popular leader in the ANC currently, with a with a point mm. of more than 7.2. So you're saying he's like maybe three to four times more popular than President Zuma? Yes. Uh, obviously, that's amongst the rank and file mm. and the supporters of the ANC, the people who would indicate in the study that they would vote for the ANC if there's an election. So it's not the million card-carrying members, it's the supporters of the ANC. All right. So um, Cyril Ramaphosa made a speech uh, this weekend and a lot of people sort of looked at it and kind of said that might have been a Sona speech, a mini Sona yes. speech. Did that and resonate with, with people? Absolutely. That was more the almost non-official Sona mm. speech. And this, the things that he spoke about, unemployment, education, the economy, corruption, um, delivering of basic services, those are all the things that are very, very important to South Africans. And all the things, I, I have to say, where the government currently is scoring very badly. So he put his finger on the pulse of the nation with that speech. Mm. Might Cyril Ramaphosa save the ANC and might that be a headache for the opposition? Because if we're saying that um, he's so popular, will that bring up the ANC enough to, for people to vote for them? It might. Remember in the last election, that was one of the other things said about Zuma is that he, uh, the lower, lower support that the ANC got in the 2016 elections can be ascribed to him and um, at the current moment he probably is and a lot of people have said that the best agent for the opposition the may, the best one getting votes for the opposition but we must also remember that a lot of people stayed away from the mm. polls in 2016 and they couldn't vote or they felt they couldn't vote for the opposition but they could also not vote for the ANC. So Cyril's big job will be to convince them to vote for the ANC again. So not go from another political party to the ANC, but from this group that are sitting on the fence mm. back to the ANC. All right, so perhaps in closing, if you track back to uh, President Zuma's administration, and if you could find one, the worst indicator that Sir Ramaphosa needs to pick up, if he had to pick one thing that he has to fix straight away, what is that one indicator that he needs to turn because that was the worst during the Zuma administration? Trust. Wow. I would say trust because all the other things hang together with trust. And there's so little trust in the party mm. currently and so little credibility. Even if people would vote for it, they would still tell you, I'm not sure. Mm. So that would be the big thing to fix. All right. I wish we could chat for much longer, but thanks so much indeed for joining us and giving us your insights. Uh, Marie Harris, Director and Political Analyst at Ipsos, thank you so much. Thanks, Peter. All right.